Hello and welcome to another Q&A for the San Francisco Independent Short Film Festival 2023. This is the Q&A for the program uh, Animated Worlds and we have some of the filmmakers with us here this morning. Hey filmmakers, uh, maybe Will, you don't, you don't wave, just say hi Will. Hello. Uh, hey, real quick, just introduce yourself and the film you're involved with, please. Uh, v, you start. All right. Hi, I'm V Sweet. Um, my film is called Amplifying Feedback Loop, and it is a short advocacy piece that is um, advocating for community action in regards to climate change. Excellent. Thank you. Will, what is your film? Hi, my name is Will. I'm a director of film documentary animation film called Disappearing Jewels. Uh, it is about my grandfather, who was a blind man who had an ex extra sense of climate and weather. And I asked questions to the, uh, the ocean animals and life science experts uh, and climate change experts uh, to ask questions that I didn't get to ask my uh, grandfather before uh, or a a as a child or and before he passed away. Excellent, thank you. Drive safely there, Will. Thank you. And Katya, hi. Tell yes, hi. <laughs> so I'm Katya Plate. My film is called Las Nogas. It's actually the third in the trilogy about global warming, but it, it takes place in the future when there is no more rain and a new kind of humanity with a group of quirky different animals and creatures have to come together and make clouds and make it rain again to make sure that earth will be green and survival can be assured uh and uh, a worthy topic why did you make your movie or what was the start of your movie katya yes wow so as i said it's the third of the trilogy so it actually started in 2012 Mm. The first one, which was hanging by a thread, and then came meeting McGuffin, and then Las Nogas. Global warming, climate change has always been part of my, really, my passion, uh, you know, my worries. And, uh, you know, I come from the visual arts, so it's also always been in my art. And then through stop motion animation, I really found just the right medium to bring it all together. Yeah. Uh, amazing film. It uh, it seemed like it would take years to make. <laughs> oh, it took five years. Yeah, I mean, with writing the script and sure. production design and all that. Sure, sure. You must have uh, uh, great patience. <laughs> Do animators? I have it. I mean, I, sometimes I think it's like that's like my karma. You know, it's like that's how I have to learn to be <laughs> <laughs> a famous <laughs> animator. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. V, what about you? Uh, first off, are you a patient person? Does animation take patience? Is that a quality of animators? Oh, gosh, I feel like I, I've heard that or I hear that a lot. And I don't I wonder sometimes if it's about patience or like tenacity. Mm. Like we're just like stubborn. Right. Right. <laughs> um, and I, I, I think perhaps I am more patient now than I was when I was younger. And I do think that it takes a certain type of um, hand or or worldview to really want to craft each individual frame and have control right. over each individual frame. And maybe that just makes us all a little obsessive compulsive, yeah. or maybe it makes us tenacious. And I'm going to go with tenacious instead. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to ask if you're OCD as well, <laughs> but but definitely um, uh, tenacious and and maybe um, just uh, attentive to detail. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Uh, so it's the, gotta what, be just right. <laughs> what what uh, inspired you to make your movie? Why'd you make your movie? I feel like there's a theme here with this group in particular. Um, but for myself, this movie was a long time coming and is probably a, a cousin to several movies that I'm currently working on. In that, um, for a number of years, I lived in Alaska with my partner. Um, and when we were there, I lived in a small village named Shishmaref. And while there, I had a firsthand look at the massive amounts of changes um, that were happening right in, right on our doorstep, particularly when we lived in Shishmaref from 2016 to 2019, 
When I arrived there, the ocean was freezing in October and thawing in June. However, when I left in 2019, it froze in January and thawed in April. Mm -hmm. um, this is a massive difference between three years. And if you also track the global trends as provided by NASA, as provided by many other institutions, such as the University of Alaska um, system, um, there, there's huge, huge impacts that we are currently seeing and are continuing to see um, on our planet. And I feel really strongly about wanting to do something. And I, I know that that's very limited scope for everyone. Uh -huh. And so I guess in some ways, this film is part of my push to get this feeling of, I need to either convey a message to inspire other people who have different skill sets than me, as well as my own you know, advocacy and, and working with um, such as the climate citizen, uh, Citizens Climate Lobby. Um, but after working um, and living in Alaska and also getting the opportunity to work at, um, excuse me, to take a workshop with the University of Alaska Fairbanks with the Earth Science Globe NASA workshop about how we as community members can activate our skill set and do citizen science. Um, I've really felt that this aligns with a lot of my goals and my needs as a human, mm -hmm. also as a filmmaker to create work that speaks on this message. Right on, right on. Good answer. Uh, Will, um, what, you know, like V said, there's kind of a theme here, coincidentally, even though there's other shorts in this program. Um, Will, what ignited uh, your inspiration to make this movie about your blind grandfather? Um, well, I mean, um, I mean, quite frankly, the way the film production started was basically I didn't have, um, I didn't have any specific theme uh, or topic in mind uh, at the very beginning. I just, I was just missing, I just missed my grandfather. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was just thinking about him and then, and then I was thinking about, um, how he was when I was with him as a child, because uh, I frequently visited him, and um, and you know all those uh, weather talk and climate talk that 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 he was obsessed with, um, it kind of got me thinking, you know maybe you know I can make a film about that, but instead of making a film just about my grandfather I was uh, thinking about making films about the questions that I would have asked him but also at the same time you know I'm a I'm a dad of you know two child two children and um, you know I constantly think about you know what future uh, is in our hands and in their hands and what future is ahead for them in terms of everything but in, uh, of course, including the uh, uh, the climate change and, and what 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 serious consequences or even optimism that they may be facing, you know, regarding regarding the, uh, the, the this very issue. So everything sort of combined, you know. I figured, you know, it is appropriate time for me to uh, make a documentary animation. Yeah. So uh, talk about Will since I'm still on you. Talk about your type of animation. I mean, I know it might be obvious to animators or to you guys, but talk a little bit about technique or your approach or what type of animation yours is. You know, there's many different categories or approaches to animation. So uh, talk to me about it from, you know, a layman's terms. Yes. So I, uh, I primarily, primarily animate with watercolor on paper. So it's frame by frame uh, painted with brush on watercolor paper. And then the only um, only time I use digital is if I have to compile those watercolor paintings in, you know, a, a software such as After Effects, uh, Adobe After Effects. But other than that, oh, or when I uh, rotoscope, I do preliminary line work of the rotoscope uh, digitally, either in Photoshop or uh, iPad uh, Procreate, but other than that, uh, you know, everything is pretty much hand painted frame by frame. And uh, yeah, I ended up with uh, about a good 4,000, 4 to 5,000 paintings for this, uh, wow. this film. Yeah. 
And how long did that take? Uh, including uh, if including the very beginning of the pre-production, I would say about one year. That's good. Uh, that that's fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For the, yeah. For the I I actually have a question the, for Will. Yes. Yeah, Will, hold on one second. V, oh. go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't want to interrupt Will, but I had a question actually about how oh, yeah. Will how you are painting are you painting on cardstock I think I missed that what size are you doing your frames at because I I'm familiar with your work and I'm familiar with you but um yeah and I yeah and yeah I was yeah say, hey. say, yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah we, we, we've been knowing um, each other for, for a while and um it's been I, a hot I saw your, yeah. yeah but I've never <laughs> actually got to talk to you about your technique and so I would really love to know like obviously you're scanning your work and you're editing it in After Effects, but what size yeah. are you working on in frames? Uh, what are, what is it that like for you, that process? It's a lot of um, like hair, hair dryer drying the frames. No, it's, uh, yeah, well, I've tried that before, but, uh, but <laughs> you know, I, I animate on a, a, each frame is about letter, letter size paper, 11 and a half by 11 and a half by, or eight, 11 by eight and a half inches. Um, and, uh, yeah, and it's, uh, I started out animating on watercolor paper, but then it got too expensive. So, yeah, so I, then I switched to, yeah, like those cheap car stocks that, uh, uh, you know, typical elementary school, uh, uh, art teacher would, would use for the, for the kids paintings. Um, so I, I would just buy a bunch of them, you know, on Amazon, um, you know, the watercolor paper got too expensive at some point. Um, and sometimes I even recycle, like if there's not much frame, uh, animated object going on one side, when it was that dry, you just flip it and then use the other side to trace uh, and paint. Um, but uh, but yeah, so every time I finish each, finish each shot, uh, which usually is about good 80 or 90, uh, 90 paintings, I just lay them all down on, on my uh, studio floor and, uh, and let it dry and while it's it's drying, I would jump onto uh, animating the next shot because usually I animate with the uh, uh, pencil or uh, uh, line work first and then uh, and then I would uh, trace them on, on the on watercolor paper. So I, I do the line work of the other shot, other scene while I'm waiting for the previous shot uh, scene to dry on my studio floor. Wow. Well, V, uh, gotcha. We'll get to your technique in a second. V, yours is similar in the sense that it's 2D, right? Um, talk mm -hmm. about your process, how you made your movie. Yeah, so I, I feel like with each film, I have a different process um, and a different thing I want to tackle, which I've got to I've got to pick Will's brain some more about that with some <laughs> issues I've run into doing something really similar, but another time. Um, with this particular film, I have found that I am I am slowly and surely itching to get as far away from a computer as possible. Um, so I am finding more methods. So with this particular film, I used a combination of different techniques where I have started to bring um, my stop motion skills back into play um, and have created a, a greenhouse stop motion um, set maquette that is rotating using some helping hands um, as well as 2D um, hand-drawn in Tomb Boom as well as actually utilizing Procreate um, which was both for comfort and ease during travel and I'm very excited for the new Procreate Dreams that's coming out mm -hmm. um, but um, and then a combination of that with either uh, found textures or created textures being both watercolor or photographs. Um, so it's it's a hybrid film that's used utilizing digital assets as well as um, physical assets. Oh, okay. Well, Katya, to you as well, uh, V mentioned stop motion, your stop motion, correct? Yes, so it's completely 101% uh, <laughs> <laughs> stop motion. And uh, it's interesting uh, because, of course, they're not real. But when I make the films, I feel like I treat it as if it was a live action film. So all the character, everything, I mean, you can see the background. That's actually one of the sets. It's huge. So uh, yeah, cool. 
So everything is handcrafted, handmade, the puppet. I actually have a, one puppet right here. Uh -huh. oh, I'm hitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think because, as I said, I come from the arts, from visual arts, everything with me, it's like hands-on, you know. I can't even imagine making a film, an animated film, a 3D. I can't imagine because the magic comes in when I start doing this. Mm -hmm. And you start with the puppets and this, and then you have yeah. this relationship with the puppets and they get their characters. And of course there's tons and tons of problem solving, you know, because they gotta be well-made, they gotta move. I mean, it's just it's just an adventure. It's wild. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's interesting that you say that because, um, you know, we do get immersed as a viewer. We get immersed in your story, your characters, because you put so much attention and love into them. It's like, now it's obvious to me that you said that. It's like, um, oh, yeah, because <laughs> they're real. <laughs> Aren't they real? Yes, yes <laughs> they are absolutely real. And and it's, I don't know who said it, who famous person said it, but the ma it, it's what happens between the frames that mm -hmm. really... Makes, right, right, right. You know, because it's like it's it, just a tiny anecdote and that's not even with this film but there's yeah. always something like with the film before i wanted hitch to move in a certain way towards the camera mm -hmm. every time the jaw came off and came off and came off and came off until it was sort of like yeah, i was almost in tears i was like maybe he doesn't want to move that way he wants to move oh. the other, <laughs> the other way it works so you kind of like you gotta listen yeah he, he was a, he was a high maintenance actor he <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's true. Animation, I guess you could say, like, most of animation happens behind the frame or between the frames, uh, as well as in front of them. Um, now, why do you, um, uh, go ahead, V, raise your hand, or speak up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. No, I'm just all right. I love curious it. about Katya's film, because you've got a 20-minute thought motion animated film, and you just started to go into it. You started to talk about, like, his jaw falling off, and the puppets are going to break at some point. And my question for you is going to be, like, what was the most challenging thing on this film? Because 20 minutes, for start, whatever kind of animated film, that is a sizable film. You're heading into, like... You're, I'm, I'm like, next film is going to be like a feature or something. So. <laughs> Actually, I already wrote the script. It's coming what? up. That's awesome. I'm not going there yet. But yes, it's already. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, there is just one challenge. I think the biggest challenge. So I have the script and it's all in there and I have it in my head. And, you know, and then I get to that scene, to one particular scene where let we can be specific, where the blood gets drawn from the homies into the into the tank and I was like how am I going to do this <laughs> you know I mean it's like where you have an and then you try so those are constantly like you have an idea how to do it and you work on it and you work on it it doesn't quite work but then the spark I think that's what creativity is you just I mean I literally at times walk around in the studio and just look for materials or oh, this could do it or this hose and then you know and maybe at the end you do it with a sharpie for example you know so they're just constant you know i mean so why why are you a why are you a why are that type of animator versus you know watercolor 2d you know why do you guys pick your medium in animation if you will like what draws you to it I think for me, as I said, it's it's just I I have to get my hands in there. That's when the magic right. comes in. And my background as a sculptor, right? Is, yeah. Gee, what about you? Like, do you make other animations, or is this your form? Yeah, gosh, I I feel like I that that one really started to like turn in my brain. I think hmm. I am very heavily two D hand drawn influenced. I find myself like really enjoying to draw and I'm observing all of the time. So that definitely plays a role in my film and that in my last several films, a lot of texture and kind of combining techniques has definitely been playing more of a role. So I think that it's my natural tendency to try to balance a atopic disorder perhaps, <laughs> you know, where I'm like, oh, a bit of this, a bit of that. Um, but I'm also, you know, I, I don't think probably as much as Katya, but I I, I want to get my hands in there. I want to to feel the, the items or yeah. um, the thing in front of me, connect with it. And there's something about working with your hands right. that is so, um, it just feels good. 
Yeah, yeah, so I agree. I think it's just a, a striking a balance and where I am striking a balance, like my current film, I'm taking a lot of photos and trying to figure out how to create um, and replicate some of those textures in front of me digitally again, um, as well as play with stop motion. So it, it's a mix. Yeah, it's it's also that it's tactile <laughs> interaction, right? The tactile interaction of yeah. animation that draws you to it as well. Will, mm -hmm. how about you? Are you are you primarily two D watercolor, or do you want to do all sorts of animation? Um, so basically, I think I do all sorts of animation. Uh, it, I'm not necessarily for or against any specific type of animation. Um, for my um. <laughs> Previous animated films, I, I've used uh, uh, many different mediums such as pastels, charcoals, and I, I even love stop motion. I just happen to do stop motion in a paper cutout, paper cutout animation format. I, I just don't have uh, skills or <clears throat> ability to build three dimensional uh, um, puppets. But um, but uh, I do love uh, uh, many aspects of stop motion animation. Um, but the reason why I'm um, I am primarily using or drawn to uh, using watercolor is because that's um, even before I started learning animation that, that always had been and still is my uh, favorite medium. And uh, I feel, you know, I have the most fun and I feel the most natural uh, when I, you know, grab a brush uh, and watercolor uh, right. stuff. So um, uh, as an animation student back in the days, you know, my, my mentors uh, really encouraged me to uh, animate the way I paint or the way I draw um, instead of really anything else. So I picked up the brush and I bought a bunch of watercolor paper and might as well I animate just like how I paint. Yeah, That's, right on. Yeah. Wow. Well, we got time for one or two more. Um, um, any advice you give to your fellow animators out there since you got three animators or to yourselves or up and coming animators? <laughs> and then maybe another question, um, just you know, anything you'd like to add that I didn't ask. But uh, Katya, do you have uh, any advice for? Well, just just keep doing the amazing, amazing films you're doing. Unfortunately, we I haven't, I couldn't see you from, but I saw Will's, and I just admired it so much. You know, the combination not only of the animation, but how he framed it, that it was his personal, you know, the story with his grandfather. It was just. Oh, great. And I yeah. love drawing and water. So I look forward v, to see your work. And yeah, let's all keep going. Yeah. No v, AI, v. We are, we, no AI can do that. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. No way. Yeah. V, v just sent you a, in the link. She just sent you a link to her film. Um, oh, thank you. I, I will send it. I you will send it. it. Yeah, you can email. Great. You're all in email. I, uh, I v, saw any... Wales, that was great. V, any advice to filmmakers or uh, animators? Gosh, I feel like Katya hit the nail on the head is make, <laughs> do. Just Don't do hesitate to do that. Sometimes people can get too caught up in their heads and I am guilty of this too, but just getting your paper to the pencil, vice versa, <laughs> the photo. Well, the however, however you do it, right? It doesn't matter yeah, which way. Do it the other way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's innovative. Um, but just, just make and also trust yourself and your process because even if process is new to you that there are many people who go through similar things mm -hmm. while making film and no we always see the end result we're never usually right next to the filmmaker seeing the blood sweat tears breakdowns of the <laughs> process and, you know, I was so glad when, Katya, you said, you know, there's just always a shot that I haven't had figured out and I have to figure it out and it just comes to you or it doesn't and a solution presents itself and you try things. And I felt so grateful and like kind of gratified in my own process. It's like, ah, there's always one shot where you know what you want, but you might not know how to get it out. Or like for me, it's in the storyboard phase. There's always one shot that's just hanging out as like a murky, I don't know what's going to go there. <laughs> um, and you, you make and you come back to it. And a conversation with a good friend who can also like be <laughs> at your level is yeah. good advice yeah, to, good to advice. kind of other to filmmakers as well, because just having them see it 
can spur a conversation where your light bulb goes off. Yeah. Well, wow. I, that would be a great way to end this Q and A, but I got to give Will a chance to answer that question too. <laughs> that was a great <laughs> answer. Uh, Will. Um, I, mean, I, yeah, I just want to say um, that, that I'm really honored to, to be a part of this great film festival with this amazing filmmakers. You know, I, I, I already checked out your uh, film Katya and, and, and Vanessa V. I, I, I'm familiar with your work as well. I mean, both of you are super talented and I'm pretty sure beyond, you know, other filmmakers we didn't get to meet or, or to, to have seen. Uh, I'm just so happy to be a part of it. And um, yeah, and pretty much like what everyone said, you know, like it, um, talk to people, experience things and feel things. And and I think like just kind of that, that, that sort of experience of uh, really uh, being somewhere or going somewhere or talking to somebody I think I think those those are really important uh, as an animation filmmaker uh, because the uh, because the experiences and, and, and that such feelings are are uh, conveyed in a, a more meaningful way when 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 you make something that are uh, um, you know personal to you yeah right on I agree good answer. Well, um, all you guys made great films and thank you for sharing them with us and, and thank you for uh, entering our film festival. Uh, and that's all the time we have. I hope to meet you guys in person someday. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. For sure. Hope. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank all you. right. That's all the time we have. Thank you everyone for watching and supporting thank Indie Film. So much. Catch more great indie movies from the San Francisco Indie Film Festival this year at sfindie.com. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thank you, Jason.